From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Banks are hoping that new chip technology on cards will be the added protection needed to fight fraud. And Vima versus the FTC see how a Valley man is having to manage life after the shutdown. Later, find out about the new technology that makes tattoo removal faster and easier. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News. I'm Lauren Michaels. And I'm Mitch Casada. Thanks for joining us. We're two weeks away from a major nationwide push to protect our bank accounts. And keep fraudsters from getting a hold of your credit card information. Concrete News reporter Yahira Hawkes is live at a Phoenix Target to explain how companies are incorporating this new chip, chip technology. You can probably recall the Target data breach, which jeopardized more than 40 million debit and credit cards. Well, breaches like that are going to be harder for thieves to pull off. That's because banks are issuing new cards with new technology, making your transactions safer. You probably got one in the mail or will soon. It's not just a flashy new card. The difference is in the chip added to better protect you against counterfeit credit card fraud. If somebody steals my card today and it's a Magstripe type of card, it's easy for them, for the fraudsters, to go and make multiple copies of those cards. Where the chip card, every single transaction that gets processed is a unique transaction. A transaction that's more secure but may mean more waiting. The chip has a little bit longer uh, wait time at the checkout line, but it's just that one little hurdle to feel secure about the purchase. And yet another change. So instead of swiping your card, as you're probably used to doing, these new cards require you to dip them into the terminal. But just like you, businesses are also making the switch. Anything to make our customers feel more secure. Robert Scalf of Biker's Edge in Peoria found out about the change and he did his research. When it was going to take into effect, exactly what our responsibilities were, what it was going to cost us. Um, and how we were going to go about it. After October 1st, businesses like Roberts will be liable for any credit card fraud unless they have the new terminals installed. It's the cost of doing business. Absolutely. We're, we're happy to. We either accept the changes and roll with them or fight them, which will do absolutely nothing. You can't expect these cards to stop all fraud. Experts predict online fraud will jump as a result of this. While this is new technology here in the U.S., the new chip cards have been around for years in countries all across Europe. But cost kept banks in the U.S. from switching over. That's because the cards we're used to swiping cost $1 to make, while the chip cards cost 3 Live in Phoenix, Yahira Hawk has Cronkite News. The ongoing battle between Vima and the Federal Trade Commission will continue in a court hearing scheduled for tomorrow. The drink company is accused of operating a pyramid scheme. Reporter Wafa Shahid has been following this case. Wafa, you talked to one man who relies on his VEMA income? Yes, he says he still believes in the company, but a lawyer I talked with says he's in favor of the investigation. You kicked my whiskers, dude. It seems like a typical afternoon for the Murray family, okay. with homework, Eat. furry friends, and even some baseball. Nice. But Brian Murray has another story to tell. My name is Brian Murray. I'm a father of four. I'm a nursing school student. And uh, I'm a Vima affiliate. I'm very proud of it. Vima, an energy drink company located in the heart of Tempe, has been shut down by the Federal Trade Commission, costing some more than just another job. It was like clockwork, you know, to be able to know that your direct deposit was going to be there every Thursday. The FTC temporarily shut Vima down under allegations of operating a pyramid scheme that, quote, lures college students and other young adults with the prospect of getting rich without having a traditional 9 to 5 job. Local lawyer David Delosier has experience in cases where a business was accused of operating a pyramid scheme. Well, obviously, Vima has a huge uphill battle. Okay, uh, they apparently have all their assets seized and their bank accounts and, and all the product and so forth. So um, I don't, unless they've got a stockpile of money somewhere to uh, fight this, it's going to be very difficult for them to have any success. A portion of Vima's official response to the FTC reads, quote, the harm the temporary receiver has done and the damage he continues to inflict on Vima are incalculable. Vima, put simply, was ambushed. After you 
put your hard work into something and you pour your heart and soul into it, it's really disheartening. I actually was getting a lot of value out of the product. Tremendous benefits with how I felt. The allegations don't really seem to measure up. While Vima earned more than $200 million annually in 2013 and 2014, the upcoming hearings will dictate Vima's future. Live in the Media Center, Wafa Shahid, Cronkite News. Underwater mortgages are continuing to drop nationally, but nearly one in five Phoenix homeowners still owe more than their home is worth. Phoenix ranks six out of the 35 metro areas surveyed for the highest number of homeowners with negative equity. That's according to a report this month by Zillow Incorporated. Our Phoenix News Digital team took a look at how these underwater mortgages are impacting homeowners of high, moderate, and low value homes, as well as the total $13 billion shortfall in equity for Phoenix homeowners. We have a full multimedia report on Arizona mortgages online. Go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. U.S. Senator Jeff Flake wants to firm up Arizona's stake in establishing ties with Cuba. Flake is encouraging Arizonans to see the opportunity in a more open Cuba through trade and business investments. Telecommunications, uh, other high-tech items. Uh, Cuba will be needing it, and they need just about everything. So it will aid uh, Arizona exporters. Flake and other business leaders also mentioned Arizona's hospitality sector as a good influence for business development in Cuba, considering the state's leadership in hotels, resorts, and golf course management. Republican presidential candidate Carly Fiorina got encountering results after winning the National Federation of Republican Women's presidential straw poll at the convention held in Phoenix over the weekend. Voters were asked right now, who is your first choice for the Republican nominee for president in 2016? Fiorina led with 27 percent of the vote, followed by Ted Cruz, Ben Carson and Donald Trump. Straw poll voters were almost entirely women from 43 states, Puerto Rico and Washington, D.C. Help me give a warm Arizona welcome to our distinguished guest and presidential candidate, Carly Fiorina. Fiorina addressed the audience about her plan to run for president in 2016. Fiorina was asked questions about her plans to deal with some of today's issues, from the Colorado oil spill and the EPA to the border. We know that we have a government bureaucracy in Washington, D.C., in which problems fester and yet never get solved. And we know as well that we are no longer leading in the world, and that when we do not lead, the world is a more dangerous and a more tragic place. Another Republican hopeful, Ted Cruz, was also at the convention this weekend. Some environmental groups are calling on Governor Doug Ducey and other state leaders to do more to protect Arizonans from the effects of abandoned mines. Cronkite News reporter Ebony Johnson is here to explain. There are thousands of abandoned mines in our state, which can put the environment in jeopardy if they are not handled properly. That's what happened on the Animas River in Colorado, but industry experts say that case was an exception. Today the water flowing into the valley is clean and clear, but some environmentalists say the kind of contamination that happened to the Animas River in Colorado is a signal that more needs to be done to protect our own water supply. We realize that mining is going to occur where the metals are, but sometimes it's important, you know, not to mine and to actually say no. Sierra Club Grand Canyon Chapter Director Sandy Barr insists mining spills like the one in Colorado are completely avoidable. And it's up to the mining industry to make sure it doesn't happen in water systems close to home. And I think, you know, taking a step back, we need to prevent uh, future uh, uh, mining contamination from either mines that are active now or that will be active. According to state officials, there are 330 active mines and 9,500 abandoned mines in Arizona. State Mine Inspector Joe Hart says his office is able to inspect abandoned mines once a year and active mines twice, despite having only two and a half people to do the job. Vice President of Engineering and Environment for Salt River Materials Group, Verl Mart, says each is unique and requires a professional approach. On an abandoned mine situation where you think this kind of situation might exist, the best and safest thing is to 
take actions to contain the material that may come out and to close the uh, orifice to the mine in a manner that allows you to safely meter it out. Inspectors and industry experts say that the spill that occurred in Colorado isn't a threat here because of the different environment and mining protocol that each company is required to follow. While state mine inspector Joe Hart says he is confident in his team, he tells me increasing the department's budget and staff would go a long way toward ensuring mine safety in the years ahead. In the broadcast center, Ebony Johnson, Cronkite News. The Department of Public Safety has announced an increase to the reward in the I-10 shootings case. The reward now stands at $50,000, up from $20,000. Investigators say they are looking into at least 11 related incidents, and the case is far from over. On Sunday, authorities arrested three men, all 18 years old, for allegedly shooting at cars with a slingshot. These attacks were originally thought to be related to the I-10 shootings, but investigators say the three suspects admitted to flinging rocks at pedestrians and vehicles on the I-10. Tattoos can be extremely painful to get. And even more painful to remove. Coming up next on Cronkite News, we'll show you the new laser that's erasing old ink in record time. Plus, an unlikely visitor to the courtroom helps those recovering from traumatic experiences. At ASU, we believe the most important semester is the one that starts after you get your diploma, the one called life. So we work hard to help our alumni thrive, teaching them the importance of not only achieving their goals, but exceeding them. With innovative programs that embrace hands-on learning, that encourages real-world growth. Our alumni know it can be the education of a lifetime, for a lifetime. For more information, asu.edu. I'm an urban gardener. I'm a PhD student in criminology and law and society. I have an expertise in construction history. I also happen to be a swing dancer. Oh, and I'm a source. And I really like being a source. Great journalism requires great sources, and we want you to be one of them. Arizona PBS is building a network of viewers, people with insight into the stories we cover and the stories we should cover. Explore what it means to be a source for the Arizona PBS Public Insight Network at azpbs.org slash pin. Are you a news junkie, history buff, science or nature lover? Then discover a world, an entire channel devoted to bringing the world home to Arizona. Watch 8 World on Cox 88 or over the air via antenna on 8.3. To find out how to tune into 8 World through your satellite or another cable provider, visit azpbs.org slash world or call 602-496-2308. Discover your world. 8 World. See this patio? There used to be a motorcycle sitting there, a bike I didn't use and didn't want, so I donated it to public television, and they took care of everything. In addition to supporting my favorite programs, I earned a tax deduction. Turn something you don't need into something you really want. Contact the Vehicle Donation Program. 8 is Arizona PBS, a service of Arizona State University. September is National Suicide Prevention Month, and two Valley women have been working to educate the public on what it means to commit. According to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, approximately 90% of those who die by suicide have a mental illness. Because of that, one group is trying to take away the stigma associated with mental health issues. The Commit campaign was founded by Ms. Maricopa County and a board member from the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. They hope their commit campaign spreads nationwide. For so many people, the stigma is, uh, is that these people with mental illness or those that die by suicide, it's a choice for them, and it's not. It's an illness. To help spread awareness, the commit campaign will be hosting a fashion show September 25th. Victims appearing in Maricopa County courtrooms are getting support from an unlikely friend, a four-legged one. Eight-year-old Sam has been visiting Maricopa County courtrooms for more than half of his life. The Golden Retriever Irish Setter Mix works with crime victims throughout their cases, helping them talk to attorneys and sometimes testify against the accused. Sam is expected to be calm, quiet in the courtroom, something he has excelled in for about five years now. Some court staff has reservations about the program, saying it could alter perceptions and outcomes of cases. We bring him in quietly in the back. He sits with the victim until they have to go and testify. 
and that's been a smooth process and hasn't created any problems. A former shelter dog, Sam, is just the third canine in the country to do this kind of work and has been a comforting presence in hundreds of cases. Tattoos are a way to express yourself, but what happens when you don't want one anymore? I spoke with the medical directors of two companies who are using tattoo removal technology to make erasing tattoos easier than ever. At Delete Tattoo Removal and Laser Salon, it's just another day in the office. And 10. Dr. Jennifer Munn says she is removing tattoos quicker than has ever been done before with a machine called the PicoWay. The PicoWay fires in a picosecond, um, which is 100 times faster, sort of in and out way faster, and that breaks up the ink into smaller pieces. And look at the results. Now this one is done. Now this is what I expect. We've pretty much been switching every single patient um, to this laser, and they are happy. And while Dr. Munn and the professionals at Delete Tattoo Removal prefer the PicoWay, the individuals at Tattoo Removal AZ at TrueMed Spa prefer a different type of technology. It's called Nano Q-Switched Technology, and Dr. Kevin Choi has been using it for the last year. It's just like uh, when you use acoustic energy to break apart the uh, uh, glass, uh, you use the same, same concept. He says the process is quick between 30 seconds and five minutes, depending on the size of the tattoo. But it sure doesn't tickle. So it kind of feels like bacon grease being shot at you over and over again. Despite the pain, both businesses say they have more clients than ever. In fact, according to research done by MarketWatch, revenue from tattoo removal has gone up 440% in the last decade. One, two, three. How much does it cost? Well, according to Tattoo Removal AZ's website, tattoo removal can cost anywhere from $200 to $1,000, depending on the size and color of the tattoo. Arizona weather poses many problems for people's health. Coming up on Cronkite News, dry, scratchy eyes may be common after dust storms and dry days, but experts say contact lens wearers may be facing a bigger health threat. Plus, firefighters had a busy weekend rescuing hikers on the Phoenix Mountains. We will give you tips on how to stay safe while tackling the trail. Tap into the art scene from coast to coast. Join the Artbeat Nation, a weekly series where you'll experience a rich cultural tapestry of art stories from across America. Meet artists, writers, composers, and performers setting the pulse of the arts in America now. Join us for a brand new episode of Art Beat Nation, Sunday at 5 on 8HD. I'm an urban gardener. I'm a PhD student in criminology and law and society. I have an expertise in construction history. I also happen to be a swing dancer. Oh, and I'm a source. And I really like being a source. Great journalism requires great sources, and we want you to be one of them. Arizona PBS is building a network of viewers, people with insight into the stories we cover and the stories we should cover. Explore what it means to be a source for the Arizona PBS Public Insight Network at azpbs.org slash pin. Tap into the art scene from coast to coast. Join the Art Beat Nation a weekly series where you'll experience a rich cultural tapestry of art stories from across America. Meet artists, writers, composers, and performers setting the pulse of the arts in America now. Join us for a brand new episode of Art Beat Nation, Sunday at 5 on 8HD. Are you one of the 1% when it comes to your contacts? If not, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says you're risking your vision. It was just last week when Audrey Perkle, an ASU student, rushed to the hospital. My eyes were very, very red, like completely bloodshot, but like my left eye, it was just like black. I could not see out of it. It all happened after wearing her lenses for about 14 hours the day before. But that doesn't surprise a local optometrist. Well, that's why I'm suggesting daily disposal because I know this is happening. According to the CDC, 41 million people in the U.S. wear contact lenses. 99% of wearers do not wear or care for their lenses properly, putting themselves at risk for severe eye infections. Okay, I'm good, I look straight ahead. Most of the problems occur when patients tend to abuse contact lenses, when they don't take them out at night when they don't clean them properly. Especially living in such dry climates here in Arizona, it's crucial to keep your eyes hydrated and clean. 
It's as simple as taking care of your contacts case. Doctor's orders always dump out the old solution and never just cap it off. Also be sure to never use the tap water to refill your case. Always use the correct contact solution. If you adhere to simple principles of cleaning lenses, you shouldn't have any problems long term. And for Perkle, she says she's now taking better care of her lenses. Oh yeah, I like wash my hands all the time, like even just in general. And I like I clean my contacts before, during, and after. Like I put drops in all the time, and I'm like very careful about it now. You should always remove your contacts and call a doctor right away if you experience any redness, pain, or discharge in the eye. To learn more, go to cdc.gov. The Phoenix Fire Department got stretched pretty thin this weekend when they had to perform four mountain rescues in one day. Firefighters were forced to climb Piestawa Peak and Camelback Mountain to rescue hikers. Crew members have to haul rescue equipment up the mountain that weighs up to 50 pounds. Supplies include ropes, stretchers, and other necessary medical equipment. Firefighters stress the importance of hiking with a friend, bringing water, reliable shoes, and a cell phone. But also know your own skills when it comes to hiking these mountains. Be honest with yourself and your ability. And, and I think that people really, really uh, underestimate the difficulty in the mountain and they overestimate their ability. So far this year, the fire department has responded to more than 165 mountain rescues in the Phoenix area. Last year, they got 219 rescue calls, the highest number in the last five years. Are you smarter than a fifth grader when it comes to technology? Coming up next on Cronkite News, we visit a classroom that is getting hands-on experience with computers and iPads. Fridays, it's at Cronkite News, your social sharing connection where you choose the news. Facebook likes and shares, tweets, retweets, and favorites. YouTube views and subscriptions. We're watching you watch us. From our digital home at cronkitenews.azpbs.org to your television, web browser, or mobile device. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Then join us for At Cronkite News, our weekly refresh, each Friday at 5 on Arizona PBS. Tickets are available now for one of the most anticipated luncheon events of the year. Join industry leaders from the worlds of media, politics, business, and education as we honor award-winning news anchor and late-night host Charlie Rose, this year's recipient of the Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism. The event takes place at the Phoenix Downtown Sheraton on Monday, October 19th at 11.30 a.m. For tickets, visit azpbs.org forward slash rose or call 602-496-4539. Hi, I'm Judy Woodruff, co-anchor of the PBS NewsHour. Preparing the next generation of journalists has never been more important than it is now. With its groundbreaking partnership with Arizona PBS, the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication at ASU is revolutionizing journalism education to provide students with a real opportunity to work and learn under the supervision of veteran journalists producers, directors, and editors on newscasts, investigative stories, and documentary productions. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS, reinventing journalism education in the digital age. Tempe schools are taking a high-tech approach to get students college and career ready. The goal is to meet 21st century standards. Cronkite News reporter Kendall Bartley took a look at the trend of tablet time in the classroom. I talked to technology experts and educators about the transition to technology, technology based learning styles and what it means for the students' future. Southern Ocean. This high tech classroom is part of a growing program in the Tempe Elementary School District. These students are getting hands on time with computers, iPads, and other tech gear. One of our biggest goals is that uh, the students are using the technology throughout the day. It's not just for, for fun specific projects, it's uh, technology that's integrated throughout the curriculum, throughout all their different lessons. Teachers from all over the district come together once a month to share their success. To help with the transition, the district has brought in technology experts like Darren Gonzalez to help teachers incorporate the technology into their classroom. So we're trying to make sure that they're, they're ready for a digital ecosystem, whether it's whatever business or, or career they go into, they're going to need to have some type of, of technology skill. 
Jessica Foster, a second grade teacher at Rover Elementary School, says her students transitioned easier than she did. At first it was a huge learning curve because I didn't use technology when I was a student, but then as soon as I saw how what technology natives they were, they could pick up iPads and technology and use it almost without instruction. What they are doing in elementary schools gets them prepared for what's next. All sixth graders in the district are provided with laptops, and the program will only keep growing. Every year we're going to have that bumped up, so seventh grade next year we'll have one-to-one, -one and then the following year we'll have eighth grade. So in three years we'll have every student in our middle schools will be one-to-one -one as well. The district is planning to allow all sixth grade students to take their laptops home with them beginning in January. In the Broadcast Center, Kendall Bartley, Cronkite News. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Now here is a look at what's coming up on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. Coming up after Cronkite News, it's Arizona Horizon. The city of Phoenix is working on plans to regulate drones, and a former state attorney general releases an album of original music. That's next on Arizona Horizon. I'm Hari Srinivasan on the next news hour. Miles O'Brien explores the latest tests on a possible Ebola vaccine. That's Monday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.